This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. Sometimes the safest place is the most dangerous. You're tuned in to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring psychotherapist and author Siobhan Scott. Madeline Soto, the 13-year-old girl from Florida who was murdered allegedly by Stefan Stearns, who was not even truly the stepdad of her, but the on-again, off-again boyfriend, molester, uh, who mom continued to bring back into the apartment with numbered doors, which that is its own question unto itself. Of course, uh, Jennifer said of the mom, no charges against her, innocent till proven guilty, and like no charges whatsoever, which is kind of surprising for everyone at this moment in time. But she is, in fact, free. We're learning more and more about this case and just how dark it got uh, from the grooming to the molesting to the photos that were taken and and how much was also completely ignored by mom. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. We're hearing uh, just, just more and more of, of the darkness in this case. And uh, there's also a lot of audio out there. We've been posting it uh, on our channels from the interrogation videos uh, with Madeline Soto, with Stefan Stearns and Stefan Stearns' parents, which I found quite interesting. Um, let's start with Jennifer Soto. Some of the uh, audio that we've heard recently from more recent interrogations, she's believing that, yeah, okay, Stefan must have done this. Didn't she already know? I mean, why, why are we, what are we dealing with here? Is this someone who just really is that dumb? Is that ignorant? I would think if there was an arrest to be made of her, it would have been made by now. Yeah. Yeah. The, the bit of information that's come out in the last couple of weeks that really fits with my impression of her is her mental illness. And mm -hmm. there were several different reports of people about her multiple psychiatric medications and how the medications did knock her out at night. Um, I believe it was an ex-husband who said that she had bipolar one disorder and bipolar one disorder is, you know, pretty severe. It's a severe mental illness and it causes episodes of psychotic thinking and psychotic behavior. And it can be treated, and some people with that condition live pretty effective lives, but it does take a lot of medication. And so if that is true, that she has bipolar 1 disorder, her ability to tune in and be aware and make sense of things that she saw really could have been impaired. And so it may have been not just denial, which is also a part of it, but it may have been that the lady is not quite right. Yeah. And that would then explain, I think, if that was clear to law enforcement, um, the DA may have looked at this and said, okay, we're we're really not seeing her as culpable in this. Um, she really didn't have a clue. And then when you mention, is she really that dumb? She doesn't impress me as a terribly bright person yeah, either. Yeah. And so it could be a combination of she's mentally ill, she's not that smart, and she really wasn't getting what seems to be obvious to the rest of us. Very weird actions, um, you know, when when being questioned by police or being presented with evidence. We have, of course, the inconsistent statements, which we talked about a long time ago, between the police, between the TV stations and all of that. Um, she, she encouraging Stefan to go sleep in the same bed alone with Madeline, not really thinking, hey, this might be a bad idea. Um, and then when brought um, evidence of, of the abuse, uh, Jennifer referred to the sexual abuse of her daughter by Stearns as not evil while yeah. labeling the murder as evil, but the sexual abuse, not evil. That's not, that's not part of it. Downplaying, literally just downplaying what was going on. And when she was shown the explicit images on the phone of what Stearns had been taking of him and Madeline, she didn't really react uh, with a lot of distress. Uh, only after being confronted with it after a while, did she finally kind of acknowledge, you well, know, maybe, you know, that there's there's something going on here? Um, is that part of bipolar one where you can literally just tune out? Like this is pretty shocking. It might, where you just can't can't process it, so you just you don't. Yeah, I wouldn't say that's a hallmark of bipolar one by any means, but it certainly could also have come from 
having some kind of sexual molest in her background or being raised in families where incest happened with grandpa or whatever. Um, I have seen mothers do that where they know technically that that kind of behavior is not right. But on the other hand, it's sort of normal in their history. And so they don't have the same intense gut reaction that the rest of us do to it. So that's what that brought to my mind that's just, as something I would be looking at. What is in her history with that? I mean, there, there's certain things, you know, in life as a parent where your kids are going to complain about, and I'm not, I'm not downplaying this at all, but I'm giving an example of like, oh, I have to stand outside and wait for the bus. It's cold out. And it's like, let me tell you about that. Like, okay, not a big deal. You can stand outside and wait for the bus. It's cold out. It makes you uncomfortable. That sucks. It's part of life. Being molested by boyfriends are not normally part of life. But is that, I mean, is that kind of how they're processing it? Like, well, I went through it. I'm okay. At least in their mind, yeah. they are. And so oh, you'll get over it. You'll move on. You'll be okay. And it's, it's just not, it, it doesn't hold the gravity. It doesn't, it, like the bar is not there of, of like, this is disturbing. Yeah. It's like, it's down here. And everybody else is like, what the? Exactly. Yeah. You nailed it. Exactly. That's exactly it. I, I talked recently with a woman who was molested as a, um, young girl by a much older cousin. And she said her mother, when she went and told her mother, her mother told her, that's just what boys do. Oh, so, you know, get over it. And so I think in some families it is minimized in that way. And then the pattern repeats because right. the the little girl becomes a woman someday and then remembers mom saying that and when their little kid comes to them and says, this has been happening. Yeah. Well, I went through it. You'll, you'll survive. Yeah. Very much. Very much. Yeah. Generations of people have done that. Yeah. That's, uh, is, that's generational trauma, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, so many questions here. Uh, the, um, the interview with the parents, I think, is very fascinating, and I want to talk to you more about that um, once you've had a chance to uh, to listen. They pretty much throw him under the bus. I know we've seen some some quotes from that of them basically acknowledging that she should be arrested too. them pretty much assuming that she's much more involved than even just he is. But they seem to really recognize that that he has a problem uh, as well, um, and well, he's not coming back home anymore, so we might as well clear out his room. It's kind of part of what that uh, is in that interview. It's very fascinating. Uh, without having heard that yet, and we'll talk about it next week once you've had a chance to listen, um, what do you make of, of parents that are that quick to dismiss their kid um, You know, on allegations like this? Well, it just makes me wonder, going back in his history, what were the red flags going back to first grade, second grade, third grade? Because I'm guessing with him, he's never been quite right. Yeah. You know, there's too too much wrong with him. And how did they either try to get him help or fail to get him help in years past? And, yeah. you know, clearly they knew that there was a lot wrong with him. But, you know, it, it you might have been able to do something with him at 8, 9, 10, 11, and certainly by the time he was an adult, it was too late. Yeah, it's it's very fascinating. If you want to listen to it, uh, it's up on our YouTube channel uh, and also on our podcast feed for anybody out there who wants to hear it. We have the full interviews of uh, of Jen, of Stefan, and Stefan's parents. Very, very fascinating. If you're into this case, do, uh, do check that out. And I'm very excited to get your uh, take on it uh, next week. You're neck deep in a dark, twisted tale. And just as the tension peaks, bam, a commercial about some miracle diet pill breaks the spell. It's like finding a fly in your soup after the first bite. But here's the fix. True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. You get to enjoy your crime stories without the junk, add free episodes, extended interviews that go beyond the surface, and early access to all the gruesome details. It's like swapping out a can of cheap beer for a glass of fine whiskey. So search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and keep the darkness flowing uninterrupted.